Today from Maximum PC here at CES 2015. I'm here at Asus's suite and I'm here speaking with um, JJ. And JJ, can you tell us what we're looking at here? Definitely. We've got a really awesome monitor that a lot of you guys are going to be interested in. If you guys have been following what we've been doing on the monitor front, we came out with the RG Swift, which was a 2560 by 1440, 144 mili uh, hertz, one millisecond response time with G-Sync. This is pretty much the same exact look and feel of the monitor because it's the same housing. So it's got all the great ergonomic adjustments, the integrated USB 3 hub. But what separates it is this is a 4K panel, so 3840 by 2160, 60 hertz refresh rate, G-Sync. Um, we're projecting to have about a five to six milliseconds response time, and it's a native 10-bit panel. So uh, as far as time frame, we're probably going to be targeting somewhere around late Q2 time frame, but definitely stay tuned to Maximum PC for more updates as far as when we get closer to that time frame. Uh, but we're working hard to bring this guy out. It's going to be an awesome enthusiast monitor for you guys that are looking for the best of the best. Do you guys have a price point? Uh, Not as of yet. Definitely at, at that time, too. It also drop by quite a bit. So we're going to do our best to hopefully get it out to you guys on time and at the best price possible. Okay, cool. And you said about five millisecond response Time. Right, yeah. Uh, one tricky thing when you look at panels and you design them is that we do actually have what's called an averaged weight that we use for all our response time. Some other vendors will select one part of the screen and give you a response time. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why we take a little bit longer is because we want to find a yield consistent for the panel where we can have that five to six milliseconds be consistent across the entirety of the screen. Um, so yes, um, our target goal is about a five to six millisecond response time. Okay, I'm gonna put you in the spot uh, between uh, AMD and NVIDIA here for just a second. Uh, <clears throat> you know, AMD claims that uh, G-Sync adds a, a little bit of a delay, like a millisecond delay, a couple milliseconds or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that's that's true? Or um, I definitely haven't seen it. I mean, I think if you try real gameplay, definitely G-Sync is a smoother, clearer, and more responsive experience than you have from a traditional V-Sync or adaptive V-Sync type of configuration. <clears throat> now, in comparison to FreeSync or uh, you know a, a different type of solution, there may be differences that occur. For us, we try to embrace as many options as we can, just as we produce AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards. Definitely, if there's other types of options out there on the market, I wouldn't say that they're not going to be coming available from ASUS. So I think that uh, whatever you guys are interested in terms of seeing it for monitors, I think you're probably going to see it from ASUS. So definitely stay tuned for more information on that front. Okay. So FreeSync uh, could be down the road. Definitely. Gotcha. Okay, cool. What else we got here? Uh, so next up right here, we've got the Strix 7.1 headset. So this is pretty interesting. Um, what we've done here is really bring a lot of attention to detail to be able to provide some full functionality. So first and foremost, if you take a look, it's got the cool Strix Eye logo, and you can see that it's breathing, and that's actually controllable. If I went ahead and go to my little control base, I can go to lighting, and if I want to go ahead and fix that to a fixed brightness, I can go ahead and do that. Now, it's pretty cool, but that's not definitely what makes this guy stand out. So first and foremost, these are entirely adjustable so that you can go ahead and customize it more to your head shape uh, and head size. Uh, the ear cups are removable compared to something like the tie mat. They're not entirely removable. It's a nice breathable material. You also have a fully detachable and flexible microphone so you can go ahead and contour it, make it work for what works best for you. Got some nice padding right here for the headband as well. Now this is a 7.1 configuration so you have front, rear, side, and sub. They're all controllable. This is using 40 millimeter driver here, 10 neodymium magnets that we have in here. This is 40 millimeter versus 30 millimeter that you would have on the razor uh, side of the fence. Now, if we take a look here, this is where things get interesting with this control pod. This is actually a full USB sound card. It's plug and play, no drivers are required. You can go ahead and connect it to your system. And once you connect it to your system, you got some really cool functions. So as you can see, we've got center, rear, side. If I was to say, for instance, go to center, I have the ability to go ahead and tune every single driver there to my liking. So if I want to have it be more pronounced uh, for one sound to another, I can go ahead and do that. I can go ahead and quickly and easily enable 7.1 or two channel operation if I want to go ahead and do that. So if we switched over to let's say main and I want my 7.1, I can go ahead and disable items. So there is also speaker setup because we have line level output. So if you want to switch between speakers and the headset. You can do that at the touch of a button. That's really cool. You can disable or enable the mic, and there's even an integrated amp in here. So if you want to be able to go ahead and punch up the dynamic range, give you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, an increase in volume, you also have that option. And even adding more to it, you got profile adjustments for gunshots, footsteps, action RPG, for racing, and the icing on the cake, environmental noise canceling. So for me, like I'm in an apartment, I got a refrigerator literally sitting right almost next to my desk when it kicks on, I got a lot of ambient white noise. With this, what it can do is essentially is it can filter out all that white <coughs> noise 
so that when you're in Ventrilo or TeamSpeak or Steam Chat, you essentially can help to process a lot of that out and have clear dialogue when you're using your microphone. So a lot of really cool functionality that you'll have when you pair the control pod with the 7.1 headset. So is that a simulated surround or you guys actually have... This is true surround because you actually have... Yeah, because I noticed inside you, that. And you actually have those independent speakers. Uh, so traditionally what you would have with like a two-channel setup is you would have some form of like Dolby Pro Logix or DTS matrixing that takes the two-channel signal and then up matrix it. But uh, we don't need to do that because we actually have those independent. But you can go ahead and have the unit operate in two-channel mode if you just want to have two-channel operation. Can we take a look at inside the, the headset again? The actual... Yeah, uh, sure. So can you sort of walk us through what we're looking at? So right here, you've got the front, okay. and then you have the side, then you have the rear, and then you have the sub. Okay. So these are all independent drivers, and it would be the same for here. I just gone ahead and removed the pad, um, but then that's essentially giving you your full 7.1 surround sound. Okay, how does, it, how does that deliver 7.1? Wouldn't that be kind of like 3.1 in a way? Uh, well, no, because you have your <coughs> sides and your rear as well. So you have two channels, right, okay. that always come through one, right, and then your rear, your side, and then your rear, and then your sub. Gotcha. Yeah. And in addition to that, we also have done special tuning to the driver. Uh, we found actually in a lot of other 7.1 headsets that the mids and the highs have a lot of roll off, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important, especially for music and games in two channel modes. So we went ahead and did some um, tightening up and made sure that the actual mids and highs are much better on this. So it's, it's a pretty good headset, not only for gaming in terms of positioning and accuracy, but also for music and movies. Okay, and it's USB only. Um, no, so you don't have to use it in that capacity, but uh, optimally in terms of the way it's set up, this unit would connect to this unit right here, and then this would connect to the system in terms of USB. But you can have a different connection if you want to use a three and a half millimeter. Okay, gotcha. And the, do you guys have, it's kind of interesting that, I mean, I, I haven't really seen a headset like that before. Mm -hmm. Usually 7.1 headsets are it's always simulated. simulated, correct. Yeah. Is, any, is anybody else doing something like this? Uh, the closest one, and as far as I know, the only current production unit would be the right, uh, Razer makes a time at 7.1. Okay. Um, and I think that we've added a lot to the table in terms of the control pad. The improved drivers, the mids, the high, the detachable mic, and a lot of other things that the time ad doesn't have. But that's pretty much your only other choice if you want true surround sound in a headset. Otherwise, like you noted, everything else is going to be some form of simulated or post-processing. Okay, and uh, for those that don't know, it's it's under the Strix brand, which is an ASUS division? Correct, yeah. So the Strix brand is fairly new, so even if you're familiar with ASUS, you might not always be cognizant of it. Um, but essentially, that's a new line that we're designating for a lot of our gaming or multimedia products. So it applies to graphics cards, keyboards, <coughs> mice, and headsets. Gotcha. And is it, uh, are we going to see it in different colors, or just orange? Right? Um, as of right now, probably everything. If you look at most of the cards, everything is kind of following this trademark, kind of black and orange. Um, but definitely, like most things, we want to listen to you guys in the community and let us know what you're thinking as far as color palette and we'll see if maybe that gets integrated in the future gotcha okay what else we got now <clears throat> so next up right here we got the ROG accessories so uh, for a long time people had asked us to produce accessories and we didn't do it because one we're very big partners with a lot of companies that already produce those products and we felt we really only wanted to get into this space if we could bring something unique creative and kind of purpose-built for people that were asking for something um, and that's what we did with the Gladius so the Gladius got released not that long ago and it's an awesome, it's pretty much the cream of the crop when it comes to a high-end FPS-centric mouse. Uh, one of the big hallmarks that you're going to see on the Gladius, as well as the two other mice that are brand new, is going to be that it's independent left and right switches. So traditionally, if you look at a mouse, this body is actually conjoined. So the actual left and right, they're actually linked together through the body. So this actually causes depression and depression, depression and actuation to not be as consistent or accurate. You have to end up kind of forming muscle memory to be a little bit more contingent on one side than maybe a Another side, what you're going to find with us is these are truly independent of each other. These are also socket-based switches. So uh, it's a little bit easier if you take a look there on the poster, you'll see that there's a switch right here. And very similar to the switches that you have like on a mechanical keyboard, different switches have different actuation and depression. So we're using the best of the best. These are using Japanese Omron switches, which are the kind of the gold standard. They have a super fast depression capability. So for guys that want to keep shooting as rapidly as possible, this is the best standard option. But you can customize it. You can remove those out if you want to use different switches. You can do that. And that's a very cool function. So it's sort of akin to like, uh, you know, switching, you know, going with different cherry switches or something like that. Exactly. You can customize it to your liking. Um, now, on the these two new models, one is going to be the Sika. Uh, the Sika is going to be our entry-level model. It's abdexterous, so of course for left and right hand. But you're going to see even though it's going to be a more entry-level model, it carries over some really premium features. One, it doesn't use the Japanese Omron switches, but it will have switchable socket support. So you can still customize it. 
Uh, you still have uh, some nice imprint finishing there for some nice grip. It will still also have an ROG backlight that will give you the nice breathing effect. It uses a high quality 5000 DPI optical engine, 1000 hertz pulling rate, and nice high quality cable. So that's going to be the Sika. Uh, this one probably out before the end of Q1 timeframe. Okay. Do you have a, a price for any of these? Uh, price not yet, but I would say fairly aggressively priced. I'd say competitive with what the entry level performance mice are. So I'd say maybe forty dollars MSRP somewhere around there. Okay. Um, on the Spatha, the Spatha, and if you guys are wondering on the names, all these are forms of swords. So the Gladius was of course Roman sword, and then we have the Sika, and then we have the Spatha, and that'll make sense when we get to the whetstone. Um, but uh, the Spatha is going to be a high performance mouse that's going to be for wireless or wired operation. So you can see right there, there's the connection uh, port so that you can go ahead and detach it if you want to do wireless or if you want to do wired. Um, this will have some really cool options. It's really centered towards MMO, MOBA, action RPG, things like that. So you got a lot of buttons that you can macro, uh, macro and customize. This will actually have RGB lighting that will be behind the buttons so you can control the color. Uh, there will be RGB lighting for the scroll wheel and there also should be controllable lighting for uh, the DPI shift button. Now hallmarks that this will have, this will have the Japanese Omron switches. It will have an ULP scroll wheel just like the Gladius, the pretty much the cream of the crop there. You still have the independent left and right. It's also socket based so if you want to change it, you can change it. It's got the nice imprint finishing for better grip and palm retention. Uh, and this will be the charging base. The charging base, you can go ahead and do it vertically if you want to go ahead and do that. Is this sort of magnetic then? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and if you want to go ahead and lay it flat, you can also go ahead and lay it flat. Um, so that'll be very cool. And uh, we're right now deciding, but it may be like the Gladius, and then it might come with the two cables. So we produce two cables for the Gladius, a very high quality braided cable, and then an ultra light weighted, uh, non-weighted cable. Because some gamers really even want even a lighter cord as they're tracking across the surface. Gotcha. So uh, the last part right here is the whetstone. So this is a new high quality surface. Um, pretty much every surface out there is going to usually be made of rubber or cloth. This is actually made of a very high grade silicone. The reason why we use silicone is it's non-porous, it has outstanding anti-friction and a non-slip base. Um, on top of that, uh, it's very, very high in terms of the reliability and the durability. Now the non-porous nature also has the benefit that a lot of gamers have reported over time with rubber that it builds up a smell over time <laughs> and you won't get that actually with silicone which is really nice. Now on top of that if we take a look at the tracking the smooth you can see with my Gladius even with a single finger it just feels really really nice really smooth consistent tracking it's got a nice textured finish on it worked very carefully on the Z height to be able to give you precise and clean and accurate tracking across the surface area and even attention to detail is all the inter external uh, portions of the mouse pad itself have also been heat sealed. The reason why we do that is to be able to go ahead and get better bonding so you don't get any fraying. So even if you want to fold this up, if you wash it because something gets on it or anything like that, you have a long-term reliable mouse surface. So that is the whetstone, which of course makes sense considering these are all swords or knives if you want to say it's to sharpen and get the best performance. And it is optimally suited towards laser or optical. Cool. And how much is that one going for? Um, I think they haven't set the final MSRP, but I'd probably say about thirty to forty dollars. And definitely the release should be before the end of Q1. Here in the states, it might even be sooner than that. Maybe maybe by the end of this month or early next month. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you, Jay. Mm -hmm.